Hello, I'm Christabel again, and this time I want to share a small diagram which I use to help people to understand suicide and when people express their suicidal feelings. Now, when somebody comes to see me and they say, I want to kill myself or I want to die, I think something that other people might think is a bit odd. I think, oh, thank goodness they're saying this. Meaning, thanks goodness they're telling me that that's how they feel. Because when they tell me that's how they feel, I know that there's a part of them that wants to live. They may not even be aware of it, and it might be a very small part. But if there was no part of them that uh, didn't want to die, they wouldn't be here talking to me, they'd be off doing it. And often when people do kill themselves, they haven't told anyone. And so when somebody comes to me, um, I'm glad that they're telling me uh, how they feel. And what I do is often um, a, bit, uh, the, a bit opposite to how normal people might react and quite naturally say, oh, don't think like that. I do the opposite. I say, tell me about it. Why do you feel that way? How long have you been feeling that way? What is it that's brought these feelings about? And what do you think will be better if you do die? What will be better for you? And so I try and get them to express as much as possible of their feelings of anger, despair, upset, and uh, grief. Because what I know is that at the end of our time together, I've helped them to empty some of that out. And if they've emptied some of it out, the part of them that's inside that wants to live has more room to be available to them. Now, uh, on the other hand, if I say to them, oh, don't talk like that, think positive, don't think about that, then I'm taking responsibility for the positive. And um, then the, the bit of them that might feel that way gets smaller because I'm doing it for them. And also, they haven't had a chance to express why they feel that way. And often that's the, the best you can give them to help them to um, uh, not do it. And no human being can keep another human being alive if they want to kill themselves. But if you can help them to feel heard and listened to and that they can express how they feel, often that gives them a chance to get in touch with a part of themselves that wants to live and to keep going as well. And I learned this through working with people. Uh, there was a man who felt very suicidal and he talked about how he felt um, and he was in a group. He was in a group with sex offenders and he wanted to kill himself. And at the end of the session, even after he talked about all this, he went home and he said, I still don't want to live. And the following week, we were all sitting there waiting for him to come back and he was late and we were worried and then he came back and he said, last week when I left here, I still felt suicidal. I went home, I sat in my car, I turned the ignition on and I'd fixed up the exhaust. And suddenly I realized I didn't want to die. I wanted to live and to face this like you're facing it and I've come back um, because I, I know that that's what I want to do. So that was an important lesson for me that if a person wants to live, they have to find it in themselves. And if you want to help them to find that part, helping them to express how they feel is a really good way of doing it. Um, it doesn't mean that, for example, if somebody's in the middle of trying to kill themselves, if you call out something positive like, don't do that, we love you, uh, if that's your gut feeling and that's what you want to do, that's fine. But if somebody actually comes and talks to you, what they're really asking for is somebody to listen to their pain, and that's what we can give them. So that's the suicide diagram, and we'll stop there and have a pause.